I've done a lot of different projects on this channel, from making a particle simulator and a rendering engine to developing AI systems. But there was one obvious project missing, something with sound. That's why I challenged myself to make using Python. Now, I could have just googled an existing algorithm for tuning audio samples, but I wanted to come up with my own. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I made my version of Autotune and how you can use it too. Let's start with the basics of sound. The sound wave, the frequency and an amplitude. Frequency represents the number of waves produced per second, but we perceive it as a pitch of a sound. The amplitude, on the other hand, gets represented by the height of the wave, while we perceive it as a volume of a sound. There are different ways of representing an audio signal. The most basic representation is a waveform, which represents the air displacement through time. This is the data you will get when working with audio files. There is, however, a problem with this. Since we only know the amplitude at a given moment in time, it's difficult to determine the frequency of the wave. Besides, an audio sample of the human voice has many more frequencies stacked on top of each other, but we just hear one tone. Luckily, we can make use of the Fourier transform to calculate the different frequency components that make up the audio signal. I use the pre-made fast Fourier transform function, which takes in an audio sample and outputs the amplitude for each and every frequency component. To do this across a longer audio signal, we must split it up into chunks and apply the Fourier transform to determine the different frequency components through time. When we would want to visualize the result, we could use the x-axis to represent time and the y-axis to represent the pitch or frequency components. The color of the pixel then corresponds to the amplitude of that particular frequency. This representation is called a spectrogram. Later on, we will be able to use this spectrogram to modify the pitch of the audio by applying different transformations. Before we move on, I'd like to note that according to YouTube statistics, Less than 5% of you are actually subscribed. If you belong to the other 95%, please consider clicking that button to truly really help out my channel. The next difficulty is reverting the spectrogram into a waveform. The method I used was as close as I could get to the original audio, but there will be some minor distortions. The idea is to stretch the spectrogram to equal the length of the original signal and multiply it by a special array filled with sine waves. Each row of this array features a sine wave with a frequency corresponding to that row in the spectrogram. The higher we get in the array, the higher the frequency, therefore there will also be more oscillations. Then, by vertically adding up the product of these two arrays, we get a one-dimensional array that represents our reconstructed waveform. By looking at the code, you might notice that there's a part that I didn't yet explain. This code has to do with multiplying the frequencies to adjust the pitch. I'll explain why and how this works in a second, but first it's important to understand how we can figure out the tone, which I call the dominant frequency, at a specific instance of time by looking at the spectrogram. What you're seeing right now is a spectrogram of a piano note. In this case it's clear that the dominant frequency sits around 440 Hz, which corresponds to the piano note A4, but this dominant frequency is not necessarily the loudest one. That's why I wrote a special algorithm to determine the dominant frequencies based on certain conditions. However, I must admit that it doesn't always work perfectly. Sometimes it picks the wrong frequency, so that's why I also gave the user the ability to change the graph representing these frequencies. In the finished application you'll also see a second graph for the target frequencies. These are what the dominant frequencies will become after the transformation. That brings us back to this code. It basically calculates the factor that we need to multiply the frequencies with at each time step by dividing the target frequencies by the dominant frequencies. Then, each frequency will get multiplied by its corresponding value. And since the frequency of a row depends on its height in the spectrogram, this multiplication is equivalent to stretching the spectrogram vertically. Now that you more or less know how the calculations behind this program work, it's time to take a look at the GUI. This time, I built the GUI using Matplotlib instead of Tkinter. That does make it a bit laggier, but overall it performs okay. 
In the top right corner there are buttons that allow you to play the audio and load or record a new sample. These buttons are self-explanatory. Then there are some buttons with the purpose of changing the frequency graphs. The first one calculates the dominant frequencies using the algorithm we discussed earlier. The second one sets the target frequencies equal to the dominant frequencies. The third one resets them and the fourth makes it so the target frequencies snap to the nearest note in the scale. If you want to change this scale, you can use the fifth button, which opens up a second window as you can use to select the scale or the wanted note. Apart from using these buttons, you can also change the graph manually. At the top right corner of the spectrogram, you can select the graph that you would like to edit. With the right graph selected, you can double click to add a point. You can also drag point around or change the height of a line segment. Finally, right clicking a point removes it. Holding control will also snap the node or endpoints of a line segment to the closest nodes in the scale. If you need more precision while dragging points around, you can use the default matplotlib buttons to move around or zoom in and out. As you probably noticed by now, when dragging around points or line segments, frequencies will be displayed above them. You can also set it to display the node names or just nothing in the bottom right corner. No worries if that explanation wasn't entirely clear. You can always find the details in the GitHub repository. The link will be in the description below. So, that's it then for this project. I know that the current application doesn't have many features yet, but I first wanted to hear your response because it took me a long time to figure all of this out. If you want to support the project or my channel, be sure to like the video and subscribe. Also, let me know what you'd want to see added to the project. For example, I could add the ability to draw or paint on the spectrogram or to add multiple target frequency lines, which would allow you to harmonize your own voice. Also, don't hesitate to ask any questions or leave suggestions. That's it for this video. I hope I'll see you soon. Bye!